Hi, my name is Dean Chu, uh, co-founder of Off Track and Dark and Wax. I do many uh, different things from music to uh, spatial design. And uh, yeah, and now I run a little music-centric bar. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So, uh, uh, a bit awkward, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, tell me what's... Um, I'm interested in your uh, background as an um, architect yeah. and then... Um, you came out as a DJ, um, yeah. and now you have off track and darker than wax, of yes. course. And could you tell um, me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, my interest in music started when I was actually quite young. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always listened to, I guess, non-mainstream music, even in the early days of synth pop, yeah. like Human League, Duran Duran, you know, okay. Joy Division, and all that. So I always felt that the music really existed in mm. in me. And then I, I come from a family of architects, actually. Okay. So my whole family architects. So I, I live and breathe that, that okay. thing, you know. And then I guess architecture and music, have they've always existed next to each other. Mm. And I think design and music have always been very closely related to each other. Okay. You can't think about design without a soundtrack okay. and vice versa. And it's about structure, it's about aesthetics, it's about intuition, you know, yeah. it's about composition. It's about many facets of like uh, life that you, you sort of combine. Yeah. So I think from from that from that point onwards I've always realized that I wanted to have a journey mm. that I can combine architecture okay. and music together, you know. I don't necessarily see architecture just being as oh a building, you know. I mm. see architecture more like a way of thinking. I, of solving problems, I, of engaging people, of yes. building a community, right? Yeah. And then what there's no better ways to do that through good design yeah. and music. So there's always remained my pillars, like my core principles, okay. how I approach myself as a creative. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> well, that's a good question, but I think architecture and design actually they are the same. Mm. And I think that the challenge to, is to exactly destroy that category about between okay. design and architecture. Okay. Uh, there is architecture in design. Yeah. The fact that you're designing something, there's a structure. Yeah. That's architectural. Okay. But I think I think the common sort of misconception about architecture is that oh, it's about a physical structure. No. It's about a building, but it's not. It's about a way of thinking how to solve a problem. Okay. You know, and I think that can be applied to any type of design, whether it's typography, mm. graphic design, interior design. Yeah. Even cooking, even, yeah. you know, even chefing. I guess a kind of art. Okay, we delve down into that that one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's always a kind of intrinsic quality uh -huh. in all different types of uh, creative fields yeah. that you can ap apply architecture to. You know? mm. And I, I mean, if you look at someone like Virgil Abloh, yeah, he's trained as an architect engineer. Yeah, and but he doesn't really actually practice buildings, but he's applying architecture in every single thing that he does. Yeah, music, fashion whatever, collaborations, yeah. right? So, to me that's interesting because then you start to slip yourself and slide yourself into different areas yeah. that you can, I guess, experiment and, and, and inject certain ways of thinking. Your, your core foundation is the architecture, of course. Yes. And then yes. you put that uh, way of thinking into um, cooking and all the stuff, yeah. music. Or, yeah. I see there's some kind of like interdisciplinary approach there. Yes. Yes. What, how, how, how do you see uh, those things? I mean, yeah, 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 interdisciplinary. What, what, do you have any opinion about it? I mean, I, I see all of them as, as part of one ecosystem, uh -huh. which is why Off Track is like the latest, I guess, the latest uh, uh, accumulation of these experiences. Uh -huh. It's like combining food, yeah. design, you know, interior design, yeah. if you like, uh, music, of course, mm. being the core of the, of, the whole, of the whole business, of yeah. the whole brand. Um, you know, it, it's so for me, Off Track is about really combining all these experiences and all these experimentations that I have, I have uh, taken on board my, yeah. my, 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 my whole life, you know. And obviously, Darken and Wax being my, my music collective and label, mm -hmm. that has given me like a platform to really build like a community through music, mm -hmm. through our music releases and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it has also allowed me to also get a sense of how I can use music to mm -hmm. shape people's experiences in space. So that, that to me, is the junction. Yeah. Like, you can design a really nice environment yeah. and then use that music to further enhance and shape that environment okay. for people. I find all these things really important to me because then it's about problem solving. So how do you design a space where you have all these things together mm. that, uh, that, that I guess, they're all harmonious with each other. Okay. 
So off track is that that thing. Off track is that space. How do you manage your time uh, uh, mm. and then your idealism? Because of course, for me, <coughs> uh, for instance, when I do music, I just do it for hobby. Yeah. I yeah. don't really, I, I'm, I don't really care about. Okay, the client uh, because I don't want to say client. Yeah, you don't need, you do need to answer to the yeah, client. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when I do design, of course, I'm solving a problem. You have a brief. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So how do you do that? Do you have any uh, division or like any differentiation in your oh, way yeah. of working? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of wired in a way where I know if it's a client-based project, yeah, I allocate myself in different compartments mm. so there's like different types of being true i'm almost like an octopus i think like okay. an octopus you know i don't let the i don't let certain values seep into the other mm. because i know that if i get too anal about certain things yeah i become unhappy i become yeah, upset yeah, and yeah. Of, of course as a creative you want that kind of approach right yeah. we all have egos we yes, all have exactly. standards we all have values but when it's work, work, you need to know how to balance your values versus a client's values mm. because you are also essentially running a project with money, yeah. with a fixed amount of budget, yeah. right? And in a certain period of time. Yeah. So you need to divorce yourself from that, yeah. away from the more soulful, fun mm. projects, you know, yeah. uh, that you do outside of work. Mm. But I try to see value in both. Mm -hmm. I don't try to say, oh, that's just work for me to keep going so that I can... Of course, I have the work to give me the stability financially yeah. so I can pursue it. But I also see a lot of importance in that because at the same time, I'm building my portfolio through that and through this at the same time. So they both inform each other. So a yeah. lot of my clients very often know that I'm an architect, but they also are very curious when they find out, when they find out that yeah. oh, I run a music label, yeah. I'm a DJ. So, I think it's really interesting right now because clients are like traditional clients like before. They, yeah. they travel. They understand, right? Exactly. They understand what's, what it's about. So I think it's about the patrons. Like mm. you, need to, you need to, I guess, work with clients that respect you as a creative mm. and they almost become like your patrons, mm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's when your work can become more interesting yeah, exactly. and you can also have more control. Yeah. Yeah. I visited the uh, Dark and Wax um, uh, website, and you also provide some like client-based project, right? Yeah. For soundtracks and Soundtracking, that kind of stuff. Soundtracking, correct. Yeah. Consulting on projects. Yeah, consulting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's uh, right. How, how, how do you see that? Uh, um, um, is it like um, uh, taking a lot of energy to to work on a project because yeah. you do uh, uh, as an architect, of yeah. course, you do a client-based project. Yeah, yeah. And then abstract. Of course, you have to deal with the customers. Customers, yeah. And uh, for the music. Uh, you said that okay, it's more fun, more soulful project. Mm. But then, when it came to a client base or a yeah. customer, uh, ha, ha, uh, is it? I mean, <clears throat> of course, you would always have some moments where you get frustrated. You yeah. know, when clients get maybe a bit too difficult, or they don't actually quite understand what they're trying to say. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I, I somehow don't get too frustrated by that. Mm. I, I might just complain a little bit with my team and go like, ah. Oh. But you know, you kind of brush it off and you realize that. At the end of the day, there's always value and humor in everything that you do, right? Mm. And I, I, I like the challenge of actually uh, challenging clients. Yeah. I like challenging okay. clients. Yeah, you know, nice. I, I don't just say yes to a client anymore. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I like telling them, well, maybe this isn't the best way to go. And sometimes I think you got to be brave as a creative yeah, exactly. to say no to your client sometimes. Yeah. And don't be afraid that they get offended because sometimes offending them might be better in the longer term. Uh. because. You, you realize what's good for the project. Mm. You, are, you remain open-minded to suggestions and feedback, but if you, if you know that this is the way that one can take and bring you home in a successful way, then I'd rather be totally honest with the client and say, hey, I don't think this will work. Yeah. And you gotta be very brave as a creative and confident as a creative yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, because we're consultants. Eh? Yeah, because we, in the end we're consultants, <laughs> right? and, and, and so I mean, and it's a very hard bridge to, to walk sometimes. Yeah. It's like you you really have your own values, your clients, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a clash of egos. Yeah. So how do you how do you swim through that? I'm obsessed with that process. Yeah, exactly. I like I enjoy that process. Yeah, yeah. a bit of pain. Right? Yeah. Maybe I'm I'm a bit of a pseudo pseudo masochist, yeah. but I think all creators like yeah. a bit of pain. You know, yeah, right? yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. You know, that's what. We, otherwise, we won't be doing this. Yeah. So first, you you were you were a director of. Um, oh yeah. 
Yeah, so until up now you've built your own drone yes. uh, Singapore. Yes. Could you sure, sure. Um, so about 10 years ago, I, I together with two other very close friends of mine, we started this uh, a spatial design agency called First Associates, Jasper and Ken uh, being the other two partners. Mm. And uh, we were actually doing a lot of interesting projects together, like a lot early, you know, the early wave of like all the trendy bars and restaurants in Singapore. Actually, a lot of it we we designed, we, we designed a lot of those in the earlier stages. So yeah. you could say that first associates were quite, we were quite uh, instrumental mm. in, in, in in creating, I, I think, a, a fresh language of uh, architecture and interior yeah. design uh, in Singapore. Yeah. Um, but obviously, after ten years of running a full, full, full time business of like ten men, you know, like 10, 10 person sort of firm, you get worn down by that, right? So like just right before COVID, I decided I needed a sabbatical, I needed a break, uh -huh. and I decided to leave the partnership without knowing that COVID was actually coming, uh -huh. which is kind of crazy actually. Yeah, yeah. So I stopped that, gave that up, went to Shanghai. To to spend some time with my sis, mm. started consulting a little bit there for actually some of the projects that she was working on. And then COVID hit. Then I actually went to NUS mm. to teach uh, New University of Singapore and oh, I right. thought design studio, third year design studio for a semester. Oh, really? Which is crazy cool. because it was totally fresh mm. in the middle of COVID. Yeah. I did that. But that, but it was also during then that it gave me a space to really sit down and think. Mm about my steps ahead. And then I think drone, drone came into being because um, I just felt like I was ready to embark on my own sort of solo consultancy. Yeah. Uh, knowing that I have already accumulated that much experience and knowledge and context in the industry that I, I think clients, a lot of new, fresher, younger clients were quite excited to know that I was stepping on myself. Yeah. And it was a very smooth transition actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very exciting to know that, that, that uh, I just knew that that you were also teaching at the university. Yeah, 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 I was, I was, so, yeah. Yes, it's kind of crazy. There, I'm also doing that. Oh uh, yeah, exactly, now. exactly. And um, of course, I would, I'd like to know, um, yeah. how do you feel, what, what you learn uh, about teaching someone else? I mean, like the students especially, because yeah. you know, like there's some kind of like a generation gap yes. uh, between you and the students. Definitely. Of course, there are a lot of, I don't know how to say it, it's, yeah. it's quite different in the background. So, yeah. uh, what, uh, well, 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 what, what did you learn about, about? I think the greatest thing I learned is patience. Mm. Patience and communication. Like, um, to, to, to understand their point of views, but also at the same time to be able to uh, inculcate and communicate certain values to them. Because the thing about architecture right, is that not everyone can practice to be an architect. Because you really have to embrace your life as an architect to do architecture. And I think a lot of uh, grad, like undergraduate, they don't understand that. They think it's just a course where they can. Yeah. But you see, it's, it's not like some other profession where, okay, you can you can blind yourself and go, okay, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna dive in it, I don't care. Yeah. I get the money, I get out. But architecture is not really like that. Mm. You gotta really be quite crazy enough to be an architect mm. because of the long hours. Yeah. The, the massive amount of stress in designing a building yeah. and stuff. There's a lot, it takes a lot. Yeah. And I think sometimes as a tutor, when you realize that certain students might not actually be cut out for this, right? I feel that as an educator, you need to do them justice by telling them that, hey, maybe this is not the way to, I'm sure you face that too. You know, some students are just like, I respect you, but I don't think you should be doing this. Yeah. And I think you owe them that to tell them, I think you should stop and maybe think about something else. Because I can see that in five or six years time, you're gonna regret that you did this. Uh, because you'll just be, yeah. you won't be enjoying what you do. Do you know what I mean? So I think as an educator, sometimes you need to be very honest also with your students. Yeah. And obviously those that you know, you they, they, they kind of get it. You, 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 you try to shape them yeah. in, in a way that, I guess you encourage them to think laterally across yeah. different areas. Don't get bogged down by styles, yeah. by, by pretty images, but develop a way of thinking about solving problems through design. Yeah. You know? Have you ever um, failed? Oh man, too many times. I've failed more than I have succeeded. But to be to be honest, right, I don't I don't think about failure or success in that way. I'm not 
I'm not bothered by failure or success now because mm. I think success is like a myth. Mm. It's like, how do you, how do you gauge success? Yeah. What by money? Yeah. Fame? Exactly. I'm not interested in any of those, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. I mean, so I mean, if you think about success, maybe it's just the way you have inspired people mm. to come to a space. Like yeah. I've heard comments about how off track has been life changing for them. To me, that's success. Mm. That's success. But I, 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 I enjoy failure. Because failure is when you realize there's a lot more that you need to learn to improve yourself as a person and as a creative. I love failures. Failure is what given me all this yeah. so far. Failure has manifested a lot of yeah. greatness for, for me and my people as well. So um, I love it. I think failure is not taught enough in school because mm. everyone fears it. You know, like, oh my yeah, God, exactly. failure is like this monster. Exactly, yeah. It's not. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I know that you love music, I know you love architecture, I know you love like what you do now yeah. and almost everything that you do now, you yeah. very enjoy in, in doing that. But which one that makes you feel more, I mean, happier? I think DJing. Why? I mean, I don't know, I, I see DJing as this kind of like, you know, like this kung fu movie, you know, <laughs> like, like, like a... I don't know, like a Bruce Lee, like be like Walter moment where you're constantly just in the flow of things, you know, you're like engaging your energy with people. And it's just so, so beautiful when you can actually connect with that person. And then nothing else really actually matters but that, that moment of connection with that person. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, that's the whole essence of our, our, our existence. Mm -hmm. It's like that connection, right? That you cannot explain with words. Um, you can't explain through science. It's it's just it's just something that happens, right? And then I I I, I, I yeah, and it's that connection that I love, you know. Okay, and and I'm 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 actually a very energetic DJ, like because I listen to so many different types of music that I love blending different genres and mixing it up at the same time. So I I love I love that kind of constant interaction with with with, with, uh, with the crowd mm. and and how you manifest and put your energy out. I feel that if you put it put it out in a good way, you get it back in a good way. You know, and, and I love that I, I love that communication and yeah, um I think I love for that music actually stemmed from the time I I was living in Jakarta. because hmm. uh, my dad lives there actually. He's got I mean he's still running an architecture office uh, in, in Jakarta. Uh, in Pluit, actually. Oh. Yeah, it is, it is in Roximas, yeah. Ah, it's so, there. bless him, still there. And I guess I've always been exposed to the music culture there. When you go to Block M, mm. uh, Jalan Surabaya, yeah. <laughs> which is like my favorite joint to go every Sunday. Yeah. And once you collect, once you start talking to the locals, all the all the lovely, mm. you know, record, yeah. record owners there and stuff, you get to learn more. Mm. And obviously I was collecting a lot of uh, black music, mm. uh, specifically from the US, like disco, boogie and stuff. But at the same time, I knew that there was the same kind of music existing closer to home, mm. like the Philippines, yeah. Singapore, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, obviously. And then when I when I discovered like all these artists, like you know, um, like Billy Sumantri, you know, like very early sort yeah. of like you know, and then you just go like, wow, there's so much, there's so much like Chris Kehar too, and all that. You realize there's so much richness and so much heritage in the music there, and once you get into it, you, you can't get out. Man. Yeah. There's so much, man. There's so much, you know. How the how those backgrounds uh, in a in geographical uh, uh, way and cultural way shape your shape how you play? Yeah. I mean, is there any influences uh, from uh, Indonesian culture or Singaporean culture and uh, others? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no, definitely. Like I. I think wherever you live, where, wherever you live, you, you kind of absorb parts of it yeah. that will influence you, right? Like um, with Australia, it's always that that kind of dry humor that they have, the kind of laid back sort of attitude that they have about life, which I admire because you, you learn how not to take life so seriously, mm -hmm. uh, and just even the nature and the landscape, the light, the smell of the air, you know, the dry eucalyptus, all these things are like. It shapes me who I am, like because then you think you think about colors, you think about nature, you think about sound, you think about the warmth, you know, the textures. And then with, with Indonesia, with Jakarta, it's really about the vibrancy, 
the dirt, yeah. the grit, yeah. the geeky law, the geeky law, you know, like the chaos. It's like you know, the sky falls. You're like geeky law, you know, that's how you do. Like, you know, you, you have that kind of casualness, yeah. which I love. Yeah. But you also develop a lot of patience to live in a city like that because. You're in a jam 24-7, right? There's nothing you can do. You just gotta be patient, yeah. sabah, and just get on with your life. And with Singapore, obviously, being such a ever-evolving, quick, like rapid sort of city that's not interested in slowing down, uh. you become efficient, you become quick at solving problems, mm. you, you stay very sharp and focused. So for me, I, I'm just able to combine all these different, I guess, traits and uh, different types of personalities and just kind of combine into what I yeah. do today. And I, I guess that also shapes the way I am. You could almost say that I'm a bit of a chameleon. Mm. Like I, I, I can kind of, I can kind of merge into yeah. different cultures <laughs> quite easily. Just because yeah. I love understanding and learning from different cultures. You know, I mean, I, I've been lucky enough to travel around the world extensively because of music and my work. So I just want to be able to continue to keep doing that. You know. Yeah, that's so your, um, I think the latest project of Tron uh, was in Jeddah, yeah. Saudi Arabia. I think that's pretty interesting because, yeah, yeah. tell no, me. Yeah, tell I mean, me. it's crazy, like, like I mean, I, I can't diss Instagram because actually I got that whole, that thing came through Instagram, which is like crazy. So basically, long story short, uh, they saw my project just browsing randomly. Through Instagram, saw that one project, they love it. They got in touch through my Instagram, right. and I, at first I was like, "Yo, I mean, is this real?" Because yeah. no, you think it's like, yeah. like a spam yeah. thing, right? like some kind of like, uh, like you know, like. But you know, I I, I was open minded. I said, "Yeah, sure, let's let's jump on a call." Uh -huh. And before I know it, I was in a Zoom call with uh, my clients, and that was actually actually the interview without being the official interview. I, and the client just really liked, I guess, the way I was thinking about design, architecture. They were in the midst of expanding their lifestyle portfolio yeah. of like, you know, hipster coffee, because they're like, they brew their own coffee yeah. as well. And before I know it, it's been one and a half years of working with them. I went up in October, was, ex you know, like exposed and introduced very warmly into the, into the Saudi culture. Yeah learn and saw a lot of things and I've been very interested in Arabic music myself. Like, like, music I like, to like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, like I sometimes I think that when you put your energy out in the world, it takes you there, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. then before you know yeah. it I'm like in, in Jeddah, yeah. like like next to Mecca yeah. and I'm like north just like south of Jordan which I really always wanted <laughs> to visit. I mean it's kinda of crazy man. life is crazy that way, you know like yeah. It's it's so crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And it, and the craziest thing is, my dad was in Saudi in the 70s, oh. working with a client there too. Really? So it's crazy how the son, yeah, yeah. cosmically, is also in the same place, working on architecture projects. Uh, I'd like to know, for you as an educator, as a DJ, as a, a, a businessman, um, in terms of doing uh, something, uh, or maybe doing uh, uh, many things all at once. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice to the, uh, the younger to younger generations? generations? Uh, which, of course, like mm. you know, the students still don't know what they want to do. You know, sure, right? sure. Like they're still looking out. Like, okay, maybe I like music. Maybe I, I like yeah. or design. Maybe I like. Yeah. They don't know. What, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, um, I think it's really important to explore. Don't worry about like. Um, I think, I, and this is the only, this is the one thing I always share with a lot of my younger peers, like, well, younger generation, like, um, don't worry about the, don't worry about results, don't worry about success, don't worry about how famous or whatever you're gonna get, like, just enjoy the process. Like, if you enjoy a certain thing, spend time on it, invest in it, invest your your time in it, see what happens. But don't invest in it and think, what's what's gonna What's in it for me? What do I get from it in three years' time? Don't think about that because I think once you think about that, then the process isn't pure anymore. Mm. The process, to me, kind of gets a bit diluted because then you're thinking about other things that don't actually matter. Yeah. But the only thing that really should matter is you 
putting your soul into that into that craft, into that journey, and be responsible to yourself in that journey. Because once you're responsible to yourself in the journey, that thing will manifest in itself. And you let it grow. It's like watering a plant is the same thing. Yeah. You water it every day. It's like gardening. It's like gardening, right? So you gotta have the patience. And obviously when I was younger, I didn't have that much patience. I wanted but when you develop patience, you realize that your journey as a creative is a very long one. It's a marathon. And you actually get better as you age, yeah. as you get older. It's a lifelong. It's lifelong. Which is why you see all the the really visionary, like the, the architects. You know, uh, they're all like, they're all like, oh! <laughs> like, I mean, they're all like, all like, wisdom, like they all have wisdom, they experience, like any musician as well and stuff, you know? I mean, because you need to have that kind of life experience. You need to get a life experience, yeah. you need to fall. You need to jump up. You need to fall again. You need to get up again. You know, and you need all this and I think don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to explore, but don't get obsessed with results. Don't get obsessed with fame. Don't worry about algorithms because the algorithm isn't real. Like just concentrate on your craft. That's all I would really advise like anyone because I did that. Like I'm still staying relevant. I'm always looking into interesting, neat, fresh ways of looking at things. But I always have my background, yeah. my roots that I fall back to. Yeah. So it's like one step back, one, one step forward. And I, I like that kind of you know, like in and out, push and pull, right? Yeah. And I think it's about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I think you can do both uh, uh, at the same time. I mean, I think, I think you can be this or the other. I don't think it's a question of being really good at one thing versus mm. being you know, like competent in a few different things. Yeah. I, I think it's what your nature and your 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 personality uh, subscribes to, you know, right? I mean, if you're a person that likes different types of avenues of creative mm. thinking and stuff, then naturally you will want to do a few different things yeah. at once. If you are, let's say, a person who's very dominant in the vision and then let's say a chef, for example, yeah. like, you know, like it's about honing the craft, I think that's beauty. I mean, that's beautiful too. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think this is a matter of what is better. I just think it's what works better with yeah. your being. Right. That's all. Yeah. That, 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 that's it. I, I think people should just maybe stop thinking so much about, oh, what is, what, what is it? Is this better? I don't think yeah. that's the point at all. I think the point is what excites you. Yeah. What pleases you. What makes you happy. What 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 triggers you in the morning. What excites you in the shower, yeah. what do you get obsessed by? I think that's, those are the questions that you should be asking mm. yourself as, yeah. a, as a person. Don't worry about the results, you know, like, don't, don't, it's like, the beauty is in the process, the beauty is how you, how you walk, how you navigate, yeah. that's the price. The price is not the destination, yeah. Yeah. because once you reach a destination, there's still many more destinations to go, yeah. right? So, <laughs> there's, no, there's never ending, right? So, that completely changed me, yeah. yeah.